Howdy folks. Widget Walls from needcoffee.com here. Back again for another Way Home review. Here's how it works for the uninitiated. I have just left a cinema where I've seen a film. It's back over that way. The film and the cinema. And I'm going to tell you about that film on my way home. And we're here today to talk about The Expendables 2. Alright, so. Expendables 2. What can we say? Well, synopsis first, I guess. So, this is a sequel. So, we join our heroes uh, in the midst of another mission. Sylvester Stallone and Jason Statham and Jet Li and his whole crew. And they, uh, uh, they've got some new blood on the team. And in the midst of all this stuff, our friend Bruce Willis shows back up. Although he's playing church in this thing. Uh, Bruce Willis shows back up and basically calls in his chips and says that Stallone's team needs to go take a, uh, take a mission in order to retrieve a bit of sensitive something. Uh, so to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. And, uh, so they take off on this new mission and hijinks and explodo all ensue. That's, I mean, that's the synopsis that you need, except to, uh, just like with the first film, you have to understand that it's being sold on the backs of its cast. So not only have you got, uh, you know, your, your your old school, some more old school than others, I mean, let's face it, but some old schoolish type of action stars like Stallone and Statham, who's, you know, more recent. Jet Li, not as recent, but still more recent than Stallone. And you've got, like, you know, Terry Crews, Randy Couture, and, and those folks who are, you know, sort of that have been kind of direct-to-video action star, and you got Dolph Lundgren. It, it is a veritable cornucopia of action stars of various uh, ages and shapes and sizes and what have you. So, it's being sold on that. Now, here's the thing, beside the fact that these people in SUVs seem to think that I can drive through them. All right, here's the thing about the first film, and actually in preparation for this way, Homer, as you know, I do very little in the way of prep other than watching the trailer, which I, believe me, I see enough movies where I see a lot of trailers. So the first film was sold to that premise of, look at all these action stars, look at them, look at this buffet of people that you have spent years and countless dollars watching kick various and sundry amounts of ass. Look, look at them. We have, dis we have put them on display for you. Look, look at them. Isn't it amazing that we are making a film with all of this ass kicking in one place? I'm starting to sound like Arnold a little bit there. I don't know what, what's happening with that. Anyway, that whole thing of, oh, look at this array. It's, it's, the, it's the ultimate, you know what? It's the, it's the, it's the everything burger, right? I mean, that's basically what it is. It's an action everything burger. That's what they sold the first film as. It's, it's a burger with everything on it. Every action thing you could possibly want on one burger to completely screw up the metaphor. Now, the problem with the first film was <laughs> that it wasn't very good. I mean, apart from the fact that I guess real squibs are very expensive these days or something, and you had horrible CG effects, it just wasn't very well written. It just didn't... It didn't... I mean, how do you, how do you have all of those people in a film, and yet there's not... There, okay... I, I guess the, the quickest way to say it would be there should have been more asses kicked per capita based on that first film than there actually was, okay? When you've got all of that going on, and my favorite part of the film is Eric Roberts, nothing against Eric Roberts, but when I'm showing up to see your buffet, your burger, so to speak, kick some ass, and I'm going, man, this Eric Roberts is awesome in this. Again, nothing against Eric Roberts. I actually like Eric Roberts, but I'm just saying... You got a problem. Now, 
When it comes to the second film, they basically realized we can put even more on this burger. And so they basically bring in Chuck Norris and they bring in uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and they bring in more Bruce Willis and more Arnold Schwarzenegger. And they're like, yeah, check out this burger. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like an awesome burger, but you promised me an awesome burger last time, okay? What's with the burger? Now, what I can tell you though, after all that talk about burgers, which quite frankly is making me hungry, is the fact that, let me put you this way, you know, you know that the premise of that, the promise and the premise of the first film, that balls to the wall, ludicrous, stupid, ridiculous, amazing, awesome film that you thought you were getting with the first film? Well, better late than never. I mean, honestly. Um, I enjoyed myself so much more because they delivered on what they said they were going to deliver. And really, when your entire trailer is nothing but, again, promising how awesome your burger's going to be, the burger pretty be awesome. The first bite pretty be, better, better be awesome. Um, so that's good. That's, oh, it's okay. You don't have to let me in. I'm only in a merge lane. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's all right. You're on camera not letting me merge, by the way. <laughs> okay, so... So, I mean, here's, here's the first thing that I realized when, when I was like, okay, this is better. Is, okay, the first film, you've got Jet Li. Jet Li can seriously kick some ass. It took way too long in the first film for Jet Li to accomplish anything on his ass-kicking to-do list, okay? This film, they very instantly peel Jet Li off and, and put him in a kitchen where there's all kind of implements that he can use to beat people with, okay? And I'm thinking, okay, thank you. That's what I showed up for, all right? You've got, you know, Jason Statham. He's, he's you know, he, his character's supposed to be big on knives, so he, let's give him a bunch of knives and have him throw them. And, and kick people's ass. Okay. So, they don't mess around a lot. Like, like they did in the first film. They get right down to it. And they, they don't make the mistake of so many action films these days in that, yes, you have to have some times where you let up off the pedal and give the characters enough dialogue and interaction so that we understand that they're human and not machines. Now, you don't need a lot of that, but a little bit of that goes a long way. Well, the film, yes, every so often it's just like, oh God, can we please get back to the asking? But not like in the first film. The first film, you could have gone to get a burger. I mean, an actual burger, assuming that they sold, no, not even assuming that they sold burgers at the concession stand. You could have driven to a place that had burgers and come back and they would have still been being expository and trying to, no, that's not what we showed up for. We showed up to watch things explode, blow something up. Well, in this film, they blow stuff up. I mean, really, that could be the review right there, except there's some other things to point out, apart from the fact that squibs are apparently still expensive and a lot of the CG bullet hits look horrible. But eventually, you forget. You just go, oh, forget it. So, all the characters get to have little moments, okay? <clears throat> they're very, very aware of what film that they're in. They do callbacks to other films that they've been in, and then kind of mock themselves for making the callbacks, which is nice, okay? It's a little meta, but that's what you showed up for. So, yes, you get a little bit more of everything that you wanted, and Again, whereas Eric Roberts made for a fine villain in the first film and was obviously having a blast, Van Damme makes a great villain. And in fact, his freaking name is Villain with one L. I even I have Lane or whatever they pronounced it. But I mean, that's the sort, once you realize that, okay, once you realize that the villain's name is Villain with one L and you see how they're playing it, kind of like sort of, straight face but yet winking the whole time, then you know, you like, yes! Where was this film last time? Oh, thank God! Now, part of it is this. 
Now, I, want, I just want to be very clear, because I know Sylvester Stallone watches these, okay? I know he does. And I really like Stallone, okay? Anybody that can basically have, you know, uh, the control over his career that he has had and tried to do things and has come back to doing what he does best and appears to be doing it quite well, okay? This is a guy who didn't have to go do Copland, okay? He didn't have to go do Oscar, which, by the way, is not that bad, all right? But yet he does. So I really like Sylvester Stallone. And I'm not just saying that to defend my position, because I'm about to say something not nice about Sylvester Stallone, because the guy still looks like he could break me in half, okay? I mean, Jesus, when he ran out of the trees in Rambo, he looked like a freaking bear, a, a shaven bear, okay? But... The main difference, I think, here is that you got Simon West on board to direct and not Stallone. Now, I personally see that Stallone is a smart enough guy where he can go, you know what, I need somebody in here who's, you know, more of an action director, okay? And maybe that's the case, because Stallone's not a dumb guy, he's a smart guy. I mean, this is the guy who finally did what somebody should have done a long time ago, and as I mentioned in the last Way Homer review on, on this franchise... It's scary that I've been doing these long enough to be talking about franchises, but there you go. That basically, hey, let's get everybody in a room and make a really great burger. I mean, that's Stallone did that, okay? So, so yeah, I think the fact that you've got a different director in the chair helps a lot. And I, I honestly didn't pay attention to, you know, who was involved with the script. I know Stallone was involved with the script, but I mean, Stallone knows what people want. He knows what you showed up for, okay? And in this film, it delivers it. So, I mean, here's what I would say. I would say, should you rush out and like see this and like go and pay full price for it? Probably not. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're gonna go to a, a screening in which you're gonna have an audience that's gonna be into it um, and you're going with a bunch of friends, you know what, that's probably worth it. But if this is just in your up, up your alleyway, you know, in your wheelhouse, so to speak. Yeah, go catch a matinee. I think if if this if if you wanted the first film to kick some serious ass and it didn't for you, then yeah, I think a matinee is worthwhile because this is exactly the film that you showed up for for the first one and the second one, and it delivered. And I will say this: I was a little concerned for this film because we're living basically in a in a week where everyone's talking about the raid. Finally, everybody who didn't get around to seeing it or it never showed up in their area, I know I know there's some of you out there, have probably already seen the raid. So, you know, to have an action film come out the same week as the raid hits DVD and a bunch of people are seeing it for the first time, that's pretty ballsy. Because let's face it, the raid is pretty awesome when it comes to people getting their asses kicked. But this one holds its own because it's just sort of in a different style. It's in a different genre, whereas The Raid was playing it completely straight. This one knows what it is, is not afraid of what it is, and actually flaunts what it is. And you know, more power to them. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm actually pleased. At the end, I was, you know, I, I was sort of, I was cheering. You know, I was just like, I was enjoying, I was clapping, because it was what I wanted. And I felt so relieved to be getting it. So, Cup-wise, I'm saying, honestly, three and a half. Yeah, yeah, I know I gave the last one, what was it, a two? But this one is, is head and shoulders above the others on just every level, except for the CG squibs. I mean, can we, go, go, can we go back to real squibs? Are they that expensive? Really? I mean, how big was the budget for this? I know that probably was everybody's salary, but I mean, come on, surely. Or can we get, you know what, I, I tell you, whoever can make the really good CG squibs, they, they're, they, they're set. Just go to Millennium Films, they can really use you. Anyway, so there you go. I would say matinee for The Expendables 2, and let's just pretend this was the first film. That's probably for the best. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for everyone for watching this. Also, a uh, thank you for everyone who, uh, who stopped by johnnyfry.com for our Kickstarter, which was a success for our uh, Zombie in My Treehouse children's book, iBook. Uh, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for everyone who supported that. Uh, we are getting everything ready to start pulling triggers on that now that, uh, 
you know, everything fundage wise is moving to where we can now do stuff with it. That's very good. So that's uh, that's happening. And we also have Dragon Con coming up for those of you who are showing up for that. So uh, you'll have some announcements about that very, very soon. So uh, again, thank you for watching. Please share this with someone you care about. And uh, we will see you next time. We've got a few films to catch up on. Hopefully we'll get a couple more down this weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye.